Welcome to season three of Hustle and Pro. I'm your host, Kelly Walker. Welcome, Malcolm Farmer, today. Hey, Malcolm. Kelly, congratulations on three years. Thanks. That's, uh, that's no small, small doing. You know, you start something like this, you never know where it's going to go. Three years is a heck of an accomplishment. Thank you. It's fun and it's exciting. And I can't believe it's taken this long to get you in here one on one. Well, that's because you've got such a long list of, um, you know, celebrities you needed to, you know, the, that the true big hitters needed to come in before you'd get to no. you know, somebody like me. You no. know, I, I can only imagine. I'll probably be back in here. You know, this is kind of just a, uh, you know, you, you just had to check the box and there we got this one done. Now we can go on to our no. our true athletes and big hitters. I probably asked for you right away, and just I've just been wait. <laughs> I've been on your waiting list this whole time. Probably. I doubt it. <laughs> uh, for those who don't know, Malcolm, um, you are the general manager and president of the Texas Legends. Last time I checked, I am. All right. And so for those who don't even know what that means, which if you listen to this podcast on a regular basis, you hear the, us talk about the legends all the time, but the Texas legends are um, the G League affiliate of the Dallas Mavs. Just had to watch the good Dallas Mavs win last night. It was a heck of a game. Luka yeah. uh, you know, played very well. Yes. Gotta love the Luka Dirk handoff that happened here. All right. So I know that I had you on in 2020. You zoomed in with me to talk a little bit of uh, MJ, The Last I Dance. Did. But I did. what I want to talk to you about today is kind of a little bit more just about you. So I've crossed paths with you over the years with lots of legends things, but I also don't know about your sports background. And like, obviously, you're into basketball, but, but like, who, who do you love? Like, who's your favorite athlete? And, and is basketball your favorite sport? Uh, basketball is my favorite sport. Um, favorite athlete, you know, you had me on for The Last Dance. And I don't know if you could grow up in the 80s and, you know, somewhat in the 90s. But, you know, I, when I grew up, Michael Jordan was the uh, the end-all, be-all of uh, athletes in a lot of ways. Yeah. And so certainly, you know, if I was to pick a favorite athlete, he would be it. Um, but as you get into sports, there's a realization, um, and, and maybe it's just as you get older, that these are people. And, you know, they have strengths and weaknesses just as anybody does and mm -hmm. they have concerns and, and life issues things that come up just like anybody does and so I, I really you know as I've worked in sports more and more uh, my outlook isn't really that who's my favorite athlete it's you know just uh, observing them doing what they're really good at what they've trained to do mm -hmm. and at times you know putting uh, challenges in their own lives that we all experience, and sometimes I think we look at athletes and say, "Oh, they've got it made; it's perfect." And you know, they could be having a challenge, and they're able to, you know, put that aside yeah. and go out and perform. Be it on the basketball court or on the soccer pitch or on the baseball diamond, um, they're able to go out there and do those things at a very high level. Yeah, and, and that's, uh, that's I respect that. I could see that sometimes knowing knowing more of the personal side of these athletes, especially with with all the hands-on that you have with athletes, it makes what they're doing on the court different and more impressive. They might not be the best player on your roster, but because you know them personally and their background or their struggles or what they're overcoming, it just, you, you see them differently. Yeah, I think that as a society, and this isn't necessarily a good thing, but sometimes we put athletes on a, on a, on a pedestal yeah. that we can look up to an athlete, but they're not a doctor, they're not curing cancer, uh, they're not teaching our, our kids. And right. Those things are, are, frankly, the things that should be put on a pedestal much more. But that's not to say that the athlete isn't um, somebody that we can look up to. It's just I think that we, we need to look up to them in the appropriate way of you know uh, entertainment and their, their being a role model, hopefully, um, for our, our community. And, and that's really what I've enjoyed. I think that, again, you grow up, yeah. you watch sports, you see the clips on the media, right? You see athletes, frankly, in their best light. And, you know, I remember when we were doing The Last Dance, I quoted Dick Bennett when we were doing that episode. Dick Bennett coached at Wisconsin. And, you know, he went to a Final Four, was very, very good. But the media saw Dick Bennett as one thing. And he was a great coach, had his system, and away he went. The reality was, you know, Dick Bennett was had challenges and struggles and, you know, the, the quote that I, I used on that episode was, you know, he was a coach in his heart and in, in his belly. Mm -hmm. But every time that at Wisconsin and, and when you're an athlete or a coach, 
you've got obligations to the media, to donors, to boosters, sponsors, season ticket holders, yeah. whatever it may be. You pulled a lot of different and, and you you pulled a lot of different directions. And his quote was, you know, every time that I open the furnace door that's inside of me for coaching, and I open that furnace door to, to and somebody takes a piece of that, i.e. I'm spending time on these other things. When I close the door, the furnace isn't as bright. It doesn't burn as hot. And um, I think that's something that we've got to keep in mind as we yeah. as we watch athletes. And hey, that, that, that sport is in all likelihood, it, it, it burns inside of them in a, in a deep way. And, and respecting that and not necessarily all the other things that come with the job. Yeah, that's a good point. All right. This is random, but I'm curious. Do you still play basketball? I don't play basketball okay. anymore. I'm a little too old. When you're in the gym <laughs> with all the people that are playing basketball or when you're doing something, listening to music, what's on your playlist? Oh, my playlist is very uh, eclectic. Same. Um, there's everything from country to classical to rap to rock to oldies. You know, my playlist, it just depends on, frankly, what mood on I'm mood. in. And yeah. Frame of mind. Um, you know, so it's all over the map. Yeah, I hear you. I think it was... I think it was Brandon Fields who was in here once and told me about his Get Ready for Game Day song or something. And I added it to my playlist and it's like one of my favorites now. So I always like to know what people are listening to. Okay, so uh, what is your sports background for you? Like as a kid, did you play everything? Oh, as a kid, you know, yeah, I played, you know, baseball, basketball, and then middle school, high school, I ran cross country, ran track, and played basketball. Um, so it was, you know, busy year round with sports. And, yeah. Um, but knew in my heart of hearts that basketball is was my passion. And uh, I remember when I was a senior in high school, my, my goal, if I'm being candid, was to become a college basketball coach. Mm-hmm. You know, and, and went in uh, when I graduated college, I, I went into you know being a GA for a college basketball team, was a director of operations, assistant coach. And during those you know ten ish years of my life, I realized that. Similar to Dick Bennett. It wasn't all just coaching. There yeah. was a lot of other things that went into this, good and bad, things that I enjoyed and things that I didn't. And, you know, so while my, my goal when I was a senior in high school and even all through college may have been to, you know, and, and the quote I would use is to have the corner office mm-hmm. of a college basketball program to be that head coach, um, over time that goal changed. It, it became... It's still something that certainly I, I watch games and I, I see what offenses are being run and defenses. And in the back of my mind, you can't help but, you know, but co- think about what yeah. you would do during this timeout sure. and what substitutions and why you would make them. And But there became things where I was like, you know, you learn about a job. You learn about all the things that, you know, are outside of uh, the things that the, the public may see. And I didn't really want to do all of those things. I didn't enjoy them. And so, you know, the, the Legends opportunity came along, and um, I certainly wasn't the president or the general manager at that time. But What did you start out of? I, basically a volunteer. You know, I think my title was just basketball operations, yeah. which was a convenient way to say whatever the heck get, you know, Get you in the door and help. And, yeah. um, you guys are good at that, though, getting, getting people in that just want to be in, and then been. they stick around for a we long time. We have been. And, yeah. um, I, you know, it's one of the things that I enjoy about the Legends is the chance to give somebody an opportunity. You know, mm-hmm. it's... We've all heard the phrase, it's not what you know, it's who you know. And while I agree with that, um, I think that we need to, as a, you know, sports and, and everybody, we need to give opportunities sometimes to people who may not have any connection, you know, no personal connection, you don't, you don't know them, right. but you, you really find out what's the in their work. heart yeah. and what's in their passion, and you give them a chance. And usually that's in an entry-level position, mm-hmm. you know, in, in that kind of circumstance. But people and that really want to do the work will do the entry-level position or do the volunteer job or agreed. do the internship and do the grunt work because agreed. they and, want to be there. And, and we want to give them – it gives them a chance to get to know people mm-hmm. and build their network. And then whether they stay with the legends or they go elsewhere, I, I'm good either way. Mm-hmm. Like, I just want to help. It's been very rewarding to see uh, young folks, you know, recent college grads come in um, who may not have – direct experience in their industry, in this industry, but throw themselves into the work. And whether they're with the Legends three, five years later, or they're, you know, at Texas Tech or, mm-hmm. or elsewhere. Because their path will go wherever it, they need to go, you know. I think it's so interesting when you talk about being in high school, having a goal of coaching in college. 
Whereas yeah, was, most kids are saying, I'm going to go play. You know, I wasn't you, good enough for any of that, and I knew it. But, so. but you don't always know it. Like, there's a lot of kids around here that think they're going to go play, and they're, they're not good enough. I, I made the varsity in high school, but I barely played. Uh-huh. And frankly, um, you know, my high school coach knew uh, that, you know, I think even when I was on the JV, uh, they would come over to me after practice and ask what I thought. How did it go? And, you know, so what should we look at for There was tomorrow? always something there more than the player. Yes. Yeah. And, you know, my high school coach gave me the opportunity uh, directly after my senior high school to uh, coach the high school summer team at varying levels. And that was, you know, again, kind of uh, scratch that itch and yeah. begin to grow in that area. Well, and I like that you talk about giving people a chance because... You can't get experience in the thing you want to do till somebody gives you a chance to have experience in the thing you want to do. Agreed. And actually, that you know, something I've been thinking about the past few days, you know, with COVID, we've got an entire, you know, I don't want to say generation, but, you know, internships for all these college students were nominal at best mm-hmm. last summer, this past year. And as a, a person who does some hiring, and all of us do some hiring, you know, I think we need to keep in mind that, you know, the kids graduating this year and next year, their internship experience is going to be less than we've ever seen mm-hmm. in a long time. Yeah. And it's through no fault of their own. Right. And so I, I just, you know, I think there's going to be a little bit of a, a mental reset there of what you expect. You know, it's going to be interesting to see how those students, you know, if if, an, if, a, if a person graduating right now or in a couple of months or last, had no last internship, is their first job going to be a full-time position? Or as hiring managers, are we going to look at it like, well, let's start them off in an internship. More an intern, yeah. And I'm not sure that's the right thing to do. Um, it's not what they'll want, but it might be the the necessary thing to do. For certain industries, it yeah. may be, but I just, you know, it's gonna be, I've just been thinking about it yeah. as we're actually beginning kind of looking at interns for this summer. Um, just realizing that, you know, they're, even those, like, yeah, when I was in college, yeah. you kind of progressed through your college years of, okay, kind of a, a part-time internship and then more of a full-time Same. internship as you get older. Those part-time internships, even for the younger students in college, they didn't happen in any, frankly, any real way last summer yeah. or last and year. And those are so important. I reflect on mine in college internships, and I still use skills that I learned in those all the time because I I got to work for ad agencies and I got to write for different places and take photos and do interviews and all all of the things I learned. So like for me, after my sophomore year of college, I traveled the country and did basketball camps all over the country. Oh, wow. And so like that was a great opportunity for me to see the country, yes, but network and meet a ton of different Uh coaching staffs. At the high school and the college level. Yeah, you got to see a lot of different programs. And I was as a sophomore, right? I just finished my sophomore year. So, like, that didn't happen last summer. Yeah. And so, like, those students, they didn't get that opportunity. And then yeah. after my junior year, I was an intern, um, you know, 40 hours a week with the Minnesota Timberwolves doing draft prep. And cool. that was a great experience. Yeah. But, again, I look back and I think if this had happened then... There's no way There's they would no have extra let people in the room. There's just extra no. come right. into the office. Exactly. So you you mentioned mental reset. So give us a reset of. So we're recording this in March 2021. Um, we mentioned the Mavs are playing. Give us a reset of where we sit right now with the Texas Legends. Where we sit right now is, and look, our, our staff has had to go through a few resets. You know, the, this last season ends. You know, frankly, for the Legends, we only missed two home games. So we, we didn't miss very much last season, mm-hmm. which was great in the, the nineteen twenty season. Uh, but then as, you know, we get further and further into COVID, there's a realization that at the very best case scenario, our season's going to be starting later um, than usual. And then there's, you know, the decision gets made that the G League's going to go into a bubble, which, you know, frankly, you know, with us being so fan-centric, um, so fan-first, mm-hmm. It's not an ideal scenario for what we do. And so we've yeah. been, you know, I hate the word pivot at this point. I despise it. I know. But we've, we've been doing a lot of virtual events. We've, we've been doing things to stay connected, mm-hmm. which I think is critical, you know, for the business, but also for everyone's mental health. Uh, during this time. Yeah, for sure. And you, so, you guys were good at being connected to the community before all of this. So well, thank you. It, this made it, it made it possible for you guys to, because if there were some G League teams, and then, uh, of course, other types of sports and minor league teams, 
if they didn't have that, that base already set up, there's no way to start during this pandemic to then try to connect with your people. Very hard. You already had it. Uh, well, thank you for that. And, and we take you know great pride in that. And frankly, it's something I probably take more pride in than anything else is that connection with our community and, and helping out and being a resource for you know people to you know be better off. You know, and whether that's putting a smile on a kid's face or you know more recently you know getting water to schools that mm-hmm. didn't have any any water for their students and so they're going home on weekends after the snow we get in recently. Yeah, um, those are more important than anything else. And so, you know, in terms of getting back to that reset now and, and for the past few months, uh, our staff's entire focus has been on those connections to the community and in terms of our season, building towards November of 21. Because mm-hmm. that's when, you know, we, we firmly believe that we'll be back to normal with, with a full arena um, and that would be when the 21 season starts. Which will be here before we know it. It certainly it's will be. March. It's uh, It's... It, you know, it, the off season always goes by very quickly, so I'm sure it will. And that's year. when you guys are busy, busy behind the scenes, getting everything ready. And frankly, so you're it's probably busier than it is during the season. Yeah, because you're um, just prepping, and I mean, there's so much legwork and planning. Yeah, it, has to it, go you know, for those who've been to our games, it's not roll out a basketball and just play a game. Right. There's a little bit more, or a lot of bit more, that goes into it to to make sure that all members of the family have a. A fantastic experience, and yeah. that I'm not going to sit here and say that's easy. That's no, that's hard. There's a lot. But it's a very rewarding it. kind of hard. Yeah, I bet. Yes, I remember doing a story on. I think it was with Kyle on what does the game day look like? Kind of the 8 a.m. to midnight <laughs> snapshot, and it's incredible. That's just game day, but then and also, that's our easiest time. And that yeah, <laughs> but then also thinking about off season, all of the just the planning and the prep work to lay the groundwork to get game day to then go off seamlessly. So, but I've also seen things going on right now, um, like you mentioned kids, and kids can come still have exposure to the Texas Legends family with camps, right? Camps are, are a, a go this summer. I guess the disclaimer, and you know, this would be a disclaimer at all times, just normally you wouldn't say it, right? Mm-hmm. If something comes up or, or, you know, knock on wood, there's no issues, but if, if we were to have COVID surge again and... Things, we would adjust, right? We, we adjusted last summer, and we would adjust again. If nothing else, we are all used to that. But, I mean, camps, we, we have announced them. They yeah. are filling up. What are they called? Last night, the I'm re- sitting on my phone. We haven't even marketed our camps yet. And eight registrations came in just last night. And I'm just like, I asked someone on staff, did we do something to prompt this? And they're like, no. March we madness. literally haven't like even pushed it out there at all. Well, there's little 10-year-olds like my son sitting on the couch filling out March Madness brackets <laughs> like and mine. probably going, Mom, can you get me into some basketball? Um, and then there's people like me who are who are group meeting our, our basketball teams going, hey, everybody go sign up for camps and stuff. What are the camps? I forget what you're calling them. Um, so our summer camps, they're the Legends camps, and we have uh, Legends Academy. Academy. Which we actually just recently, we launched during COVID. Oh, these aren't the same camps? They are not. So oh. summer camps is summer. Okay. Right, those are those are what we've done for years. Um, it just appears that it, we've sold them out for a long time, but I haven't seen registrations come in this fast, this early, ever, which I think is a great indicator of you know folks yep. are are ready. Yeah, um, and they know that we're going to take care of them. You know, if things were to change or any circumstances come up, we've that's been our mo forever. So Legends Academy was really an opportunity. We, we started off virtual. You know, giving kids and small groups a chance to do some drill work, some skill work, you know, during the pandemic when you're not supposed to be out at all, right? Yeah. And so we, we started off virtual, and recently we have gone back to very small in person. Um, and so just kind of easing back into that. And that's once a month is what we've set it up for. Okay. Very small group, um, whereas camp has certainly skill work. It's got games. It's got contests. But I'll say, you know, our camps, rule number one is that the kids get home safe. And rule number two is that they have fun. Yeah. Okay, with Academy, rule number one is they get home safe. Rule number two is that they learn something. Yeah. Okay, that's actually rule number three for our camps. But with, so with Academy, it's, gotcha. it's for kids who want to get better. Yeah. And they're, they're, it's, it's two hours on a Saturday once a month. It's okay. a, I think we've set it up for the second Saturday of each month. Okay. I didn't realize and, the, the, the distinction, but Yeah, so they, they get a report card oh, afterwards right. with each skill broken down. They can progress through our system with our drills. That's good um, stuff. And we even give them take-home stuff. So the idea being it's for 
I don't want to say it's for the hardcore basketball player because it, it can be, but it's not. I mean, it's more development than the camp. Yeah. It's for the kid who wants to get better year round. It, whereas, and I'm just going to say it with our camps. Yes, we want them to get better. And I tell our camp coaches this every camp, no matter how good a coach they are, they could be John Wooden. They are not going to develop the next LeBron James in this camp. Right. What they can do, though, is make that kid have fun. Right. Love the game of basketball. Leave with a smile on their face, which means that they'll go play go again or next keep playing. Week yeah, because they and the week after, and that's how you get better. right. Because they're certainly not going to get better if they left there and tell their parents, eh, I'm yeah, I don't want to play basketball. basketball again. Yeah, then they're done. So we want them to learn something so they can go work on it some more next week mm -hmm. and just keep playing because that's how you truly get better is you do it it's the 10,000 hour mm -hmm. principle right you do it for a long time and you do it with energy and enthusiasm and we can do that for one week at camp and if they leave with a smile and they enjoyed it they're much more likely to do it again next week which is why that's rule rule number one is bringing the kids home safe yeah and rule number two is that they have fun have fun and then that they learn something I feel that that carries over into during seasons with you guys because anybody who's been to a Texas Legends games know knows that the kids are having fun. Even our kids sit in their seats a lot, but they're still having fun because of the, the because of Byron out there on the mic and things happening and moving and it's constant and the music and, and all the activities, sure, that they can physically do in the arena, but they leave there um, or the people that stick around and, you know, like to get as much uh, exposure to players. I don't know if that'll ever happen again. So before but, I had kids. But it's, that's the beauty of like them loving the sport. Before I had kids, I, I heard those stories, mm -hmm. uh, but you can't appreciate them to their fullest until you're a parent. I, that's just my own conclusion. Until you, know, you go too and try it. <laughs> yes. and But like your kid, son, daughter, having a smile on their face and being happy as a parent, that's... That's happiness. That's what it's like, about. You're not yeah. worried about yourself. You're, you're that, that chance to put a smile on their face. And so I was at, you know, we had a uh, outdoor, uh, you know, socially distanced, all, all those things, networking event this past Tuesday morning. We called it a rooftop. It was on top of the parking garage and you know, watched the sunrise. It was great. Cool. But one of our members came up to me and it made my day. And, and you forget these things sometimes during the off season. He said that his, you know, three or five year old grandson had come to him last week. And said, you know, I'll leave his name out, but when are we going to those basketball games again? And it, it you know, A, it broke my heart because of COVID and yeah. we weren't able to do that in, in a full, meaningful capacity this mm -hmm. past season. But it also made my day that, like, a child that young, A, remembers. Yes. And remembers. B, is, is telling grandpa, I want to go let's now. Go back, yeah. I'm ready. Like, let's go. I'm waiting. You know, there was, a, there was a gleam in his eye as he was telling me the story. And that gleam is that, like, that, that is the most important thing. Because he knows that his grandson is having a blast and loves it. Mm -hmm. And he's able to share that moment. Spend time with him, yeah. And that's all that matters. Yep. That's it. And so that made my day. That, that's why um, we live sports, too. It's not just the sport and what happens on the court or field. It's the, it's the memories and the, and the connections and the, the being there, you know, just the whole experience. Yeah, I, I, you know, I'm a basketball guy. You know, I, I said I wanted to be a college basketball coach, you know, and, and as I've gotten older again, there's just uh, so much more um, meaningful stuff mm -hmm. to it than just taking a round ball and putting it through a round hoop. Yeah. And... You know, it's the other stuff that is so much more important. Um, you know, you, you think about, and any of your, of your listeners, you think about your, your best memory of a sports event with mom, dad, uh, grandpa, grandma, you know, son, daughter, whatever it might be. Mm -hmm. And I would venture to say that it's, you don't remember the score of the game. Right. You might remember who won. Right. Some players and yeah. If yeah. it was a championship game, but, sure. Yeah. Okay. But I would still say, I, I bet you don't remember the score. But you remember the way that, you know, your family, the experience they had, the smiles they had, the look of awe in a three-year-old's mm -hmm. face. Those things is what are, are what you remember. And those things are, are far more important. 100%. That, that hits home with me for sure. Because we had family traditions. And my, mine are sitting at Rangers games because we were from a couple hours away. And... 
And those are the lasting memories of my dad um, is, is being at those games. Yeah, I remember some of the players on the field, but I don't remember the details. I just remember the, the traditions and the memories, and that, that was like our family stuff. So, yep, you're right. And you guys are doing a fantastic job of it at the Texas Legends and keeping Frisco connected. So thank you for that and keep, keep it up. And Malcolm, thank you for coming in. Hey, it's my pleasure, Kelly. You do a great job. Lifestyle Frisco, you guys do a great job. And anything we can do to help, we're all in. Thanks. All right. We'll see you soon. And thank you for listening to this episode of Hustle & Pro. Make sure you subscribe wherever you listen to your podcast. We'll see you next time.